Good morning, everyone. Happy Halloween. Today is Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about three things that could kill your productivity. I am very tough to talk about the first one, okay? Um, much, like, so much, because it's been on my mind for several days, well, more than several days, and I just didn't want to only talk about this one thing, because it would feel like a rant. Um, instead, I decided to add two more things that I know I struggle with when it comes to productivity. Um, actually, let me back, let me take that back. I'm actually doing, I actually do really great with it. However, I used to struggle with it. Um, and once in a while, it does pop up. And I feel like a lot of us, us, okay, um, will struggle with the first one. Um, and probably the other two, really, really big. So I'm going to go over them and how to actually, um, how to fix them. Okay, because if it kills your productivity, you can't get shit done. If you can't get shit done, then you're sitting here twiddling your thumbs how to make, wondering how to make money, right? Wondering how to make the next thing happen. And that, for me, feels unproductive in itself, you know? Thanks, Mary. I'm not really feeling my hair today. It's very hard for me to like my hair curly. I don't know. I think the, the, I think the biggest issue is where to part it, so on and so forth, but thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. While everybody comes on in, before we start on the three um, things that could kill your productivity, again, very excited to talk about number one on this list. Um, I wanted to kind of share with you the things I've been working on because you may find it useful for your business. So you guys are no stranger to the past few Facebook lives regarding holiday season, getting ready for it, etc. Um, I have been working my butt off, okay, um, you know, regarding the workflow for my holiday season, meaning I have my binder outside there, but I am preparing everything um, when it comes to Handmade Mastermind, when it comes to my e-commerce business, and particularly when it comes to holiday season coming up. So what am I going to do on Black Friday? You know, what am I going to do on, you know, during December? You know, when I'm going to do it, what, when, when I'm going to post, how I'm going to post, are my graphics ready? Like everything. And, and so when I was working on it, it's, it takes a long time and, and, um, and it takes me longer because I have people that I have to, um, manage as well. So I'm always like, you know, in a good way being interrupted because I need my help, whatever. And I found that when I was doing it, I think Angela mentioned it yesterday in the group, hello, that it was a lot of hard work, right? And, and but now huge relief is lifted off her shoulders. And I thought to myself, wow, no offense, guys. I was like, wow, I'm not sure if a lot of you guys would have had the, the, the stamina for lack of a better word, to finish this type of project. And I'm still not quite done. I completely finished the Handmade Mastermind plans for the holiday season. And um, today I'm going to be working on Modern Pink Paper. It's going to be easier because I've already done um, Handmade Mastermind, so now I know exactly what to do um, and how to do it. Nonetheless, um, <clears throat> I just thought to myself, wow, I think a lot of people would have just quit and put it to the side and and I didn't obviously because I know how important it is. I've done it for a few years now. I've done this, and it's proven to be very successful for me. I've um, done it even throughout the year when I'm trying to plan a big like, you know, email blast to my e-commerce you know fans and and all this stuff. The point is, this is what I was working on yesterday. I'll be working on the rest of it today um, for my e-commerce business. This should be done by the end of the week, probably prior, um, and and then. And then secondly, all my holiday season will be planned out. And all I have to do is follow these sheets of paper that tell me on what day I wake up, post this, post that, and do this, you know? Hold on. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to share with you what I was working on because it is not easy work. It is not easy work. It takes a lot um, out of you. And um, it's certainly... Um, it's not for the week. And we're going to talk about that today because the first thing I want to talk about has a lot to do with that. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I got to, I got to, first of all, I need a haircut. Um, that's number one. Okay. So let's get started. Okay. I'm going to get started on the three things that kill your productivity. 
all right, um, and how to fix them. Um, number one is kind of a weird one regarding in regards to how to fix, but you'll you'll see in a second. Um, so number one was inspired by um, well by my whole career as the handmade mastermind. You'll see in a second what I mean. Um, however, recently ish, uh, you know, um, you know, I talk to a lot of members as you guys can imagine. Um, whether they have questions, whether they want to buy the webinars that I have and what would be right for them, or, um, you know, they've had a coaching, uh, you know, a while ago and, you know, um, or recently, you know, cause they've scheduled it out in advance and, um, you know, whatever. So I, I've run into a lot of people who bear with me as this may sound like a rant and it's meant to be and you know guys I'm very nice to you guys you guys know that but sometimes I have to kind of give it to you straight and this is what number one's about so if you can't handle the heat then get out right so I I run into people who know what to do because they know or because I've told them right I give them an actionable plan what to do etc but somehow turn around and don't know what to do and feel paralyzed and it's not because they don't know what to do. They knew what to do because either advice was given to them and, you know, they know they heard it, um, but they weren't really listening, but they just turn around paralyzed. They still look for answers. And I find that it's for several different reasons. Um, you know, it's, it's for several different reasons. One, they're too lazy to do the work. Did they expect the answers to be, oh, do this, this, and that to your shop or to your business? And then of course those things may require a lot of work require a lot of time dedication and they they didn't make an emotion they, they weren't emotionally ready for that commitment so you know technically speaking they would look around for other answers meaning ask around like hey how can I do this to fix my shop how can I do this and I've seen this guys time and time again okay I've seen it in you and and if you're I mean I don't think I'm pointing at anybody in particular in this group but I've seen it. I've seen people know the answers. I've seen them turn around into other Facebook groups and ask the same question when that other group gave them fantastic answers or simply I've done a shop critique before I gave them a really laid out, um, you know, to do list of actionable to do list and how to do it. Yet they turn around and then several months later, they're like, Oh, how come I'm still not making sales? I'm like, you didn't work on anything I told you to. And it's like, why, why is it? Because here's the thing, right? I'm, I'm, it's obviously a productivity killer. That's number one. But the point of this uh, Facebook Live is to figure out how to fix it. The point is we all can doubt ourselves. We all can doubt ourselves when it comes to, are we able to do it? We, we're not lazy by any means, but sometimes we become lazy in certain things. You, you know it. I've had days where I probably don't want to work for the rest of the day. And I, go like, and I just chill out, veg out. Am I a lazy person? No. Sometimes you just feel overwhelmed. So you step back. Sometimes it may happen more often than not to you. That's a problem. But I'm here to help you fix it. And, and it's important to understand why this happens. Um, it's more important to understand why it happens. So then you know how to fix it. And I find, I find that a few reasons, and, and I'm just kind of like throwing it out there. I find that it happens for a few reasons. One, um, we don't, okay. See if you can follow me here. We don't know what we don't know. And sometimes we don't know what we're capable of because we never did it. Okay. And so I, this is, this holiday season was the hardest I've ever planned. Remember the recent holiday planning I've been doing. It's much more efficient than I did last year. A lot more work, but I know I'm going to kick butt this holiday season because of it. I just know. The point is I push through it. And I find that a lot of us, when I say us, I mean, just in general, I'm not particularly talking about one person in this group or two people in general. We might find something new to us. Let's say you guys are starting to first apply Etsy SEO. Let's say if you're brand new or you're like, nope, I've already done that. I'm working on my email list. You know, whatever it is that's new, you find it scary. You're not used to it. Um, you know, you might push back. You might not work as hard as you should on your email list or as hard as you should on, you know, um, you know, getting that new website up. How many times have we talked about, you know, Etsy possibly shutting down shops, you know, all this stuff, you know, you, you lack control of certain things. You guys know, I love Etsy it makes money for me, but the, the more, but, but the reality is, is that 
we don't control it. And a lot of us were like on the bandwagon of like, yeah, get a website, get a website. How many of you actually have actually got a website, right? Or have some little solid plans of getting one very soon? I don't know, you know, and I'm hoping more people, more people than not. But I feel like our, our lack of knowledge, our lack of knowing paralyzes us. Okay. And our lack of belief. So sometimes we get, um, overwhelmed with a lot of things, particularly this, just for example, say Dahlia just gave me a great coaching session. You know, I have actionable things to do. And even though Dahlia told me in what order to do it, I still feel paralyzed because there's so much stuff to do similar to how you guys feel paralyzed when you have a whole bunch of ideas running in your mind, right? You guys know what that feels like every day for me. Right. Um, and that, all of them seem like great ideas and you want to just stop everything you're doing and work on something of those. It paralyzes you. So knowing too much, even if I help you will paralyze you, knowing too little will paralyze you because you don't know what you're doing. So when does it stop? When does it stop? Here's one thing of how to fix it. Okay, here's where the solution comes. You got to be disciplined. Guys, I can tell you for a fact I'm not disciplined every single day, but I can tell you for a fact I'm disciplined most days, okay? If not most of the time. When I say disciplined, I mean when I'm sticking to like Caitlin right here. I thought my website would be ready by July. I'm a master procrastinate master procrastinator and we are now November. It's not ready. Thank you for owning up to it. It could happen, absolutely. But if you're here to get a solution, and again, Kaylin could be the person that has so many orders that that's why there's you know procrastinations happening. Maybe it's for a good reason, but if it's not for a good reason, okay, and you guys know it in your heart, discipline is so important. When you're not making sales, you feel unmotivated. Therefore, you become more unproductive. However, that's when discipline comes in and says, you know, you could be disciplined in order to get it done. You discipline yourself, even though you don't know it, to brush your teeth every morning. Hopefully everybody brushes their teeth every morning here, every night, whatever your regimen is. It's, it's, a, it's part of, it's a habit that you do, you know? It, my kids, you know, they're young, so I'm, I'm learning to discipline them regarding it. Every morning I have to double check that they brushed it, every night, it's annoying. And nobody ever told me that I have to do this as a parent. Figuring this out, I figured this out several years ago. And also check their backpack for homework, all this stuff, the point is I have to do it regularly. You know, I have to be disciplined to do it because then they, they drop, okay? This is what you have to do for yourself. And so you sit here saying, okay, I got it, right? I have to discipline myself, push myself. But it's, and, it's, and again, it's not that simple because when you're in a funky groove, you know, sure, have your days when you have your funky whatever and then you could take a break. But more often than not, you should have to push through it, okay? You have to push through it because, you know, a lot of us, and I, I know you guys know this, are capable of so much more. I was talking to my brother the other day. <coughs> my brother was still in town visiting me. We talked about online businesses and you know what he does. And I said to him, you should start an online business. I said, you have me to help you. I mean, what other better person to help you? Um, regardless if it's um, you know, selling a, a service um, or e-commerce, I'm I'm you know well versed in both. Um, you can do it. And, and he, you know, he started bringing up some roadblocks about why he couldn't, whatever. And I said, you're preventing yourself. I said to him, remember how we grew up? You know, our dad never took risks. You know, it would be very unlikely that I would think I would ever run my own business, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But in the beginning, it was just for fun. So there's no discipline involved. That, that's, a, that's a difference between my story. I didn't do it for a reason. I just did it because it was fun. Eventually it turned into a business because the demand was there. Um, the point is you have to be disciplined. You have to like, after this Facebook live, I'm going out there, I'm checking on my team, blah, blah, blah. And then I am going to, what am I going to do? I have to double check my to-do list, but assuming, whatever, assuming that I don't know what's on my to-do list for a second, I'm going to work on um, my list of things I have to do ready for uh, my holiday season for my e-commerce business. And so that, re that requires me, um, I have the emails already set up from months ago. I have to double check the emails I have that's automated sent out to my customers. I have to double check my coupons working for that time, for those times. Um, I have to make sure I like the graphics, if not redo them, which I'm probably gonna redo them, that's just me. Um, I have to plan what I'm gonna post, certain things. I have to get everything ready. And I don't know if I'm gonna finish it in one day, I doubt it, because it does take me some time. But I have to be disciplined. And 
And today, um, I don't want to work because I thought of it this morning. I was like, I don't want to work because my husband's taking a half day. He's taking my brother to a local college. <clears throat> and my sister will be working on something that doesn't need my help with. I'm like, I want to take the rest of the day off, but I'm not. Holiday season's creeping up very, very closely. And I'm like, I don't have time to waste. I'm also trying to do other things before holiday season. So the point is discipline, push through it. I've talked about it in many Facebook lives, what keeps you motivated. Um, so figure out what keeps you motivated and do it. Um, I tend to find that if my assistant stays in the office, I stay in the office. She's been working extra hours for the past few weeks because we're busy. And when she stays there, um, I said to her yesterday, you're a bad influence because you stay here, I stay here. Sometimes I stay up in the office past, past week or so until like six or seven o'clock. You know, I go cook dinner and I go back upstairs, you know. The point is discipline, okay? That's the biggest, biggest thing. Stop making excuses. Stop saying, I don't know what to do when you exactly know what to do. Either I told you or simply step outside yourself and say, if I were to give advice to somebody that had the same situation, what would I tell them? You know, I would tell them to do X, Y, Z in this order, right? You get overwhelmed with your thoughts, st step back for a moment, take a break. So those overwhelming thoughts, I think a lot of us can have, can, can leave and just relax, take a sip of tea, whatever it is, go for a walk, then go continue to start. So those, those uh, overwhelming thoughts leave your mind. <clears throat> so discipline is one of them. Um, and number two is not believing in yourself. You know, I feel that, um, and, and it's not because because you don't believe in yourself, but because we don't believe we know how to do something. And that can be paralyzing. You know, when somebody's out there saying, I know I have to make a website, right? But there's so many steps to it. There's so many things I want it to function like, but I don't know which apps make it work this way and blah, 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 blah. And a lot of things we're learning as we go can be very paralyzing. Um, in fact, good, good uh, example. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is. You'll see next year, but I'm working on something that I don't know how to do technically. And I, it's, it, the idea is very frustrating to me. It was two nights ago, Monday, it must've been Friday. No, it must've been Friday. I was so angry, it paralyzed me because I didn't know how to figure it out. Um, well, it, I didn't know how to figure it out. So it paralyzed you know, me for like an hour or so. And then eventually I, I grouped together. It was later on that night, unfortunately. And I figured out what I, I'm, un, I'm unable to do this. So what can I do? Like I problem solved and I was unable to do something with this new idea I had. Um, but there's certain things I could do. And, but earlier I was so paralyzed by the fact that I couldn't do it. I couldn't move on. You know, I decided, okay, if I can't do this, what can I do? You know, it's, it, and it's out of context. You guys probably don't understand what the hell I'm talking about. Cause I'm not giving you the, you know, but um, either way I had to push through. And yes, it took me later on that night, but the next day I, the next time I saw my assistant, I said, Hey, guess what? I figured it out. I can't do this, but I could do this, this and that. I just kind of went back on the bend wagon. I, 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 cause I know I had very little time to, to mess around, you know? Um, Gemma, this sounds like me. I have so many ideas and so much that I don't know how, how to prioritize and feel overwhelmed. Therefore I don't get as much done because I can help you prioritize. That's easy. That's so easy for me. And most of the time you probably know the priorities, but you're yourself. So it's hard for you to be unbiased. In fact, if you probably ask a friend, a business friend, if you have a business friend saying, Hey, you know, I have this, this and that to do. This is where my business is at. What do you think I should do next? And why they could probably give you the answer. Um, you know, a lot of times I use coaching sessions for that. Well, coaching sessions are much more deep than me just saying, here's your priorities, obviously. Um, but a lot of times in the end of the coaching session, you have an actual to-do list you have to work on. Um, and I help you prioritize, which is more important and why. Um, now to keep on track. Thanks Dad, for the motivation. You're welcome. So, so I just wanted to go over this number one thing. We'll go over the two other things in just a moment, but, um, you know, you gotta just, okay. I'm, I'm not trying to curse this morning. So I'm trying to think of what else I could say. You gotta just suck it up. Just stop. We're not children unless you're a child watching this. <laughs> Most of us are adults, right? I think so. Um, <laughs> Don't know each other owns business, me personally. But we're not children. Stop acting like it. And I'm that might sound harsh, okay? And I'm not trying to be, but that might be the kick in the pants you need. You're you're and, and here's the thing: if you're okay with steadily growing your business, you know, steadily, then that's cool. Ignore this this tip right here. But but a lot of us I find that, you know, while still and study does win the race, and we know that, a lot of us need to jump over these, these, you know, these uh 
large heaps, you know, and, and they're blocking us. And, and so, you know, have you guys prioritized or planned out your holiday season if it's relevant for you? Um, if not, what the hell are you waiting for? We have less than a month before Black Friday comes. Why haven't you done it yet? And if you tell me that, oh, I'm busy filling orders, that's a good thing because you're busy. But why aren't you taking a pen and paper at night? It doesn't have to be as elaborate as I did it, okay? It doesn't have to be. But there's some things you have to do. I mean, well, you don't have to do anything. But I was just trying to help you in this holiday season. For those of you who, who I did not, I mean, right now it's a very, very hard time to start building a website because we're about to hit in holiday season. But why haven't you started earlier? Like, stop making excuses. Stop saying, oh, you know, oh, you know, <clears throat> um, I don't know which platform to go with. I don't know how to do this. Guys, I've done plenty of Facebook lives on website related things. Plenty. Okay, so go do the work. Either go search for my Facebook lives, search it on YouTube, use something called Google, right? A lot of times we know the answer. And yes, granted, I mean, if you want to do something really, really deep, Google's not gonna help you. You need step-by-step, -step, you need, you know, I get that, but there's a lot of answers that are given to you out in the internet world. You just have to look for it. You won't believe, I mean, now listen, nobody wants to watch an hour long video sometimes of my Facebook lives, granted, right? It's a long video. I know people do rewatch them, but sometimes people ask questions in a group. I'm like, I talk about this whole topic in a Facebook live. And yes, not everybody could catch a Facebook live live, right? So they might miss a, a few of them, but um, it's, it's important that you understand that these Facebook lives have tons of information that you guys could use. You just have to go back and, and see which ones are relevant to you and say, you know what? This is what I need right now. Let me figure out which website platform I should use. Let me watch this, you know? Um, cause the answers are there for you. You just have to be aware. If you guys obviously make an effort to catch these Facebook lives live every single time, you, you'll have it in your mind and you won't miss out. Okay. Let's, let's move on to the second tip. I just don't want to be stuck on this first tip, but essentially I find people make excuses. Okay. Stop. Again, we're not children. Stop making excuses. You could do it. And if you don't know how to do it, learn how to do it. If you don't know how to learn how to do it, buy a webinar, buy a class. Okay. Get a coaching session with me, whatever it takes. Okay. If you can't afford it, then just accept it and learn slowly, right? You might learn information for free, um, but learn slowly and accept that. Okay. Um, and again, there's a few other things that could um, prevent you, paralyze you, but nonetheless, you have to be disciplined. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes. Please go back and look guys, the Facebook lives I do. I mean, people that are in this group and have been in this group for a while know this. There's a lot of people in this group that are newer. Okay, the Facebook lives I do, for the most part, are things, are, are videos, are lives that most people would pay for. Okay, um, in fact, people have told me that I should charge for it. People have told me that these type of Facebook lives are usually done in paid for groups, but yours are better. That's what they tell me. So don't take, don't take it for granted. You're right, I'm never going to charge for these. But imagine one day I did. You, you're going to say, damn, I took these for granted. I should have watched. I should have paid attention. You know, I'd rather you work hard than pay attention to my Facebook live. But when you need it, come in and join. A lot of people tell me they work while they listen to me. Fantastic. Right? Okay. So let's go into tip um, number two. This, this number two thing that can kill your productivity. Okay? And the number two and three thing I know everybody deals with. I know it. Number two, interruptions, interruptions. They're sneaky little interruptions and you don't even notice them, but they're there. Okay, guys, they're there. Stop playing with your phone when you're working. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Stop playing with your phone when you're working. I know I see you checking Facebook. I see you checking all that crap. I see you doing it. Stop. Simple, discipline, put the phone far, far away. Okay. Now for me, I barely check my phone. <clears throat> I used to be worse at it, but now I'm better. The times I do check my phone is when I'm ready to, uh, be, you know, talk to you guys. Like I'm replying to you guys throughout the day. Um, I don't do it every minute you guys tag me. Um, but, um, I go there and I reply. Sometimes I reply to Etsy messages here. If I don't want to change what's on my computer screen, that's work related though. Um, but I, um, I don't actually actually have to leave mine far. Mine's actually next to me, but it doesn't bother me. I'm always in the groove of what I'm doing. If you know you touch your phone often, okay, put it away. Put it on silent. There was times I used to put it on silent, okay? Put it on silent. Put it away, okay? Simple. If you're the type of person that gets interrupted by your phone, that is your solution. If you walk away today not choosing to do that solution, that's on you. 
Okay. Yes, I know. It's such a bad habit. You're like, oh no, it's like crack. I need to have my phone next to me. Right. Relax yourself. Okay. Nothing comes, right? Uh, habits don't come just after one day. It takes discipline. It takes practice, right? Um, you have to give it a chance. You know, it's like driving. When I first learned how to drive, I was much older than most people that learn how to drive. Um, I couldn't turn the wheel while I was on the phone with my mom. I still remember I had to turn on the I-10. I couldn't. So I said to her, I'm about to turn on the I-10. I have to let you go. Like, I still remember I couldn't turn. But practice made perfect. Now I'm like a freaking rock star in driving, you know? I mean, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just saying, like, I'm really good at it. So same thing. Like, when I first put the phone away on the side, it might not feel right. It might feel like I have to check it, I have to check it. Discipline yourself. You might end up checking it. Fine. But know that every day you're going to keep doing it until it becomes a habit. If you know it's your interruption, okay? Next, when it comes to interrupting. Uh, right now, I'm talking to you guys on Facebook Live, but imagine I'm like working on my computer. This is actually my computer right now, okay? Um, tabs are open, Facebook's open. You know, guys, Facebook is the number one used social media in the world, right? So you're more than likely you have it open, okay? Take it off, okay? Now, if you ask a question in a group, you obviously want to keep it up to get the answer because it's obviously business related. Fantastic, okay? But other, and other tabs, it's not just Facebook, okay? Take away the other tabs. Now, again, this is a solution. If you know you have tabs up and you're checking Facebook often, et cetera, it is on you to decide to do it. I just provide a solution. If you walk away today and still have it up, then you're one of those people who decide to listen to advice, just so you know this, and still, ignored, still ignore it, you know, and still ignore it to, to actually implement it. So when you complain that you don't have enough time and, and you, know, you can't get things done and blah, 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 then realize it's actually on you and you're just complaining just to fill up words you know, in, in, in space, you know, because you're not making an effort. You're not disciplined. Like we talked about earlier, get those tabs off, get the Facebook off, m you know, move, move and get your work done. Okay. So I'm being tough on you guys today, but you have to hear it because I see this often and I'm like, what's going on again? Just remember, I'm not perfect at it. Okay. But I'm not sitting here complaining. I'm not getting anything done. I'm getting too much done, which I absolutely love. Sure. Do I wish I could clone myself? You know what I would pay to clone myself? You have no idea, right? But I can't. That's, that's, that's the reality of it. And so I'm productive as much as I can be without becoming a robot. You know, some days I feel like a robot. Um, and some days I'm a little less productive. And I'm okay with that because I know I work hard. There's other days I'm here in the office until 6 or 7 instead of 5 o'clock, which is my normal time I stop. And I'm okay with that because some days I will have days where I'm going to finish at 3. And I'm okay, okay? All right. So your interruptions, put them away. Identify what those interruptions are, Okay. Um, and, and guys, those are examples. If you're on Pinterest, if you, if your mom calls you throughout the day, if you, I, I don't know what those interruptions are for you. Okay. Get rid of them. Get rid of them completely. Um, there's today. Thank you. You're welcome, Hannah. And if, um, if that's the case and you have to listen to the beginning of this Facebook live, it's really, really important. Um, but I'm about to talk about, uh, number three. Okay. Um, so the first one, just to wrap up what I was saying, the first thing that kills your productivity is, is simply, um, you know, you not believing in yourself, you, you, you holding your own self back because of lack of discipline in some form or another. Okay. You know, the answers, but you become paralyzed because you're so overwhelmed, right? Stop it. Stop it. And, and, and as simple as, you know what, looking at to do list, you know what to do first, but you have so many ideas in your head and this tip number three is going to help you with that. But you say, okay, this is number one. Do number one. Have somebody hold you accountable. My, my husband works for me. So maybe I tell him, hey, check in with me every 30 minutes and make sure I'm doing what I have to do and check in with you. Or if I tell him my next task I'm working on, hey, sweetie, I'm going to work on, you know, blah. Check in with me in the next 15 minutes, make sure I'm still working on blah and I'm not doing something else, you know, and be firm with me, right? So, so tip number one, the thing number, the first thing was, you know, lack of discipline and, you know, knowing the answers, being, you know, being, um, you know, making excuses, you know, and not doing the work that you have to do. Uh, number two, of course, is your interruptions. Okay. Talked about how we could easily get rid of the, you know, solutions. It's, it's, it's whether you decide to do the solutions or not. It's that simple. Okay. If you decide not to, it's probably because you, you feel like you're, it's like, it's like you're addicted to it. Right. But try, you know, you're not going to have withdrawal symptoms. You might actually, 
but you have to try. And if you really want it to succeed, again, it's like, it's like practice makes perfect. Okay. Um, you keep doing it, keep doing it. If you're disciplined, you will keep doing, keep doing it, keep doing it. You may not be perfect at it, perfect at it in the beginning, but you will get better at it. Number three, I know we all struggle with this because we're entrepreneurs. It's what we do. It's the ideas in your head. At, in one given day, I have, independent, actually depending on the day, there was, um, if you follow me on Instagram, I have the link above. I post on Instagram stories. I haven't, I didn't do it yesterday because I was so busy. But I posted the other day, a few days ago, a picture of me, but instead of my face, I put an emoji over my face that looked like this. <laughs> and I, I pretty much hashtagged it. I feel overwhelmed. And it was because I had so many ideas, awesome ideas. That was just, so I have ADD, right? So like, and so sometimes it, it really flares up and I'm like, oh, right? I'm so disciplined that I know how to take them all and put us eventually over time, take them all, put it aside, put the ones that I want to work on to work. I have already, I have already, well, I have to finish up some small cherries on top and I already goal planned for 2018 and a lot more things seep into my goals, which is fine. Sometimes I might think of something that's amazing that might have to make it to my goals. But a lot of time while they sound like a great idea, they're not really in retrospect. And more importantly, while they might be a great idea, I can't work on a million things in 2018. So I have to pick and choose. It's just the reality of it. I'm only one person. Hold on. Okay. So the ideas in your head are coming at you like crazy. You know, you see one thing that I said, and all of a sudden it sparked a few different ideas. And now you want to get into doing this, this, and that. And you want to do this and this, and you thought of this and whatever. Okay. However it comes to you, you guys know what I'm talking about. When those come, okay, hold on. There's different ways I've attacked it and dealt with them, okay? Um, you have to find the way it works for you, okay? So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips and you can decide to try it and do something else, it's fine. I have a, I have a, oh, That's why that's my chat feature on my website. So I have a customer messaging me. Um, you have to have a piece of paper in front of you. So when those ideas come at you, so imagine you're working, right? And like, you're like, oh my God, I have a great idea. I should take this design and make it into a notepad, right? And then you know what? I should have a blah, blah, blah. And I should have blah, 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 right? Hold on. I can barely see. Okay, slipped. One second, guys. So all you have to simply do is say, okay, I want to turn this into a notepad and have a whole collection of, you know, stationary items. I'm making this up. Write it down. Okay, write it down. Later on that day, you say to yourself, oh my God, I should totally try to do uh, promoted pins on Pinterest. I saw somebody do it. It looks like a good idea. Boom, idea. You know what? I'm going to have my assistant work on that project I always wanted to work on. I completely forgot to think about it before. I'm going to write that down. So then as you're writing down, you go back to your original work. Hold on a second. If you purchase today, I can ship it today. If you purchase today, within one hour, within 30 minutes, I can ship today. Just be sure to choose. Sorry, guys, this is a chat feature on my website. I have to answer the person. Anyway, so essentially what you're doing is taking all those voices in your head. Um, I love the voices. It's what makes us feel alive, right? Put it on a piece of paper. 
it, there's always a pad of paper next to me. And I'm always like, that's a good idea. I try my best. This is my kryptonite. I try my best to write it actually in handwriting. I can actually read later. So just remember that. Because sometimes I can't reread what I wrote. Write it later. By the end of the day or the next day, sometimes I forget that day. If I still have it on my list and I did not accomplish it because I didn't have time to accomplish it or it's not it's a big project, can't accomplish it, I move it to Trello. Okay? I In my Trello account, I have, you know, um, a card, sorry, a list pretty much of my ideas, of my random ideas. I call them pretty much random ideas, and these are the random ideas. Some of them are legit that have to get done. I'm like, you know what? This has to be done before the holiday season. I move it to my assistant's to-do list on my on my thing. But, um, because it just popped in my head. One second. Okay. So, um, the point is, you can't, you don't have to fear all these ideas going away. You're writing them down. You're going to get back to it later. Now it's on paper and pen. That, that's not, it's not visible ink. It's going to stay there. Okay. And if you can leave that work that day, not put it into Trello or however you want to, you know, you can leave on the paper. It's fine. But those ideas in the head, something that we could barely stop. It's just, we're very creative people and writing them down means you still have them. Don't worry. We're keeping those ideas safe because, and some of them could be completely useless. Some of them could be great, but you don't have time to decide at that moment. If those ideas are useless, great, fantastic, not even worth your time thinking about again, etc. Don't think about that. Write it down, move on, continue what you were doing. Because all the time when we're doing things, ideas could spark from those from those ideas. My his my husband could be talking to me, right? And I'm doing my work. And I also mentioned something about a dinosaur. And I'm like, oh, dinosaur stationery, that's perfect. Example, right? When oh God, people should, you know, blah blah blah. I write it down. Okay, that's what I do. And then I get back to it. Okay. And it's simple. It's again another disciplined um habit you have to get used to where you go in write it down come back to it later because i have transcribed it on paper okay i know my ideas are still safe so you don't have to worry about letting them go and you know you know what i'm saying and it also gives you time to step away from those ideas getting you excited and then when you're more relaxed and you have the time you say to yourself well that was a stupid idea cross it off or that is really not in my cards this year because that's like running before walking. You know, some people have to work on certain things in their business before they work on other things. So removing that is probably ideal, you know, and so on and so forth. So having that, and you can transcribe them to Trello, you keep them on paper, however you want to, you know, keep them. Oh, keeping them in a file so then eventually when you have the time, you can look at it. That's fine. Um, however you want to file it. The point is, if those ideas are in your head, get them on paper immediately when they get, when they get in your head move on back to what you were working on. Okay. So you don't kill your productivity. I'm not saying to ignore what you have in your head. It's still going to get you excited, but I feel that it works for me when I put it on paper. Okay. Um, hold on. Hmm. Michelle stores her ideas in Trello. So she doesn't forget them. I also have a Trello board for Facebook lives. So when I'm like doing my walks and I think of something, I'm like, yes, perfect Facebook live topic. I put it in the Trello. Um, I put it in Trello because, um, and then that, that's my system. And so guys, systems don't work unless you do. So continuously getting ideas in your head and writing them down will eventually, um, you know, train you to keep doing that. So you don't get paralyzed with all these thoughts. Okay. Um, so practice makes perfect. You might try it today and say, that's a great idea. Let me try it. But if you don't keep at it, if you don't keep at the system, it's not going to work for you. The reason why Trello works for me in organizing my life and my business life is because I kept at it. Okay. If it doesn't work for you, it may not be a system for you, but more than likely you haven't given it a, a, you know, a decent shot. Okay. Karen, I bought a portable 10 subject notebook to keep with me at all times to write all these ideas down in, but have yet to use it. I'm making a point to take it out today. That's interesting. Again, you know, I don't know how big this notebook is. Maybe something that's not very functional for you. It may just because it's, either way, sometimes it's mostly because it's a habit. You have to get in the habit of doing it. You know, um, in, in my downstairs, downstairs, sometimes I don't want to type out ideas. I want to write the ideas. I always have a notepad and pen downstairs 
So if I'm not in my office and it comes to me, I'm like, yes, I write it down. Okay. Um, and eventually it might move to Trello. Again, these are systems that I have done, but it ha- works for me because I've done it over time. I continuously train myself to keep doing it. If I think of Facebook lives and say, t- decide, to my, decide to myself, oh, I'm not going to write it down. That, that will go away. I won't think of it again. But if I put it in my Trello, okay, then it's much better. It's in a safer place. But I've done that because I discipline myself to keep putting it in there. Discipline yourself to keep getting your crazy ideas in your head that keep coming, whether they're crazy or actually legitimate, write it down. Get back to it later. The point is not to kill your productivity, right? You have it on paper. It's safe. You know it's safe. Uh, okay, it's safe. It's on my paper. Let me get back to work. That so because you you could you could you could feel comfortable knowing that the, the ideas you've written down are safe on the side. You could definitely get back to them. Okay. Um, so again, I just went over three things that could kill your productivity, and um, three solutions to them. And you know, I think all of us, and this is my opinion, a lot of us struggle with all three of these. I think some of us at least struggle with one and and the the purpose, the the idea here is it is up to you to choose or decide whether or not you actually want to implement them. If you want to be a lazy fool and be unproductive sometimes, and you're okay with that, then that's cool. If you're okay with that. Okay. If you're like, I'm cool with growing the way I'm growing. Once in a while I have a lazy day. Once in a while my action, my, my thoughts overwhelm my mind. So I'm okay. I'm okay with that. You're okay, which I doubt most people are usually not okay with that. That's why I'm doing actually this Facebook live. But if you're not okay with it, then you know what you have to get done. You just have to choose to do it. Okay. I don't want to hear excuses of, oh, but this and that you, you're much more control than you think you are. You know, it's, um, you know, you tell yourself, oh, but I can't do this. I can't guys listen. Okay. And again, this is not for everyone. I get it. Right. I could only, I talk from my experience, not everybody's, but you guys don't have ADD and I don't take medicine for it, but I've learned techniques to deal with it. Um, over time, over, you know, many years, the point is I choose to do it. Now, again, I'm not saying that, you know, this issue is curable without medicine. And what I'm saying is, you know, other things that we're working on, other things that you're doing, you choose not to do it, you know, because you're overwhelmed with thoughts. I have given you solutions. When I had that mental breakdown the other day, I had to kind of get over it. And it took me like a couple hours, a little bit less than that. And then by the time you know it, the work day was over. And at night I, I remembered feeling upset and I was like, why am I upset? Oh my God. Cause that thing. So then I said to myself enough, I can't focus on what I can't control. What can I control? And I worked on solutions, but it's not the perfect solution. I wish I could do the first thing, but I was unable to, but I worked on it. I just have to move on. You know, again, this is discipline over time. A dry erase board would be a cool idea for this list. It could be anything. I mean, Michelle says dry erase board. Somebody says notebook. I say to keep a little notepad and pen, move it to Trello later, whatever works for you, whatever is uh, realistic for you. You know, if you have to get up every single time to get up onto the right and dry erase board, you may not want to do that. You know, I don't want to get up every single time, so I won't use a dry erase board. You may want to. Whatever feels realistic to you, be it to keep with it, okay? I keep a small couple of notepads next to me, one for ideas, one for supplies needed as I run out, and one for tasks to give to my husband. I love that. Um, Michelle, Michelle says it. Michelle says you just have to get out of your own way. But a lot of us don't realize we're in our own way, you know? I was, um, was it? was it yesterday I was doing my walk and I thought about this? I don't know what I thought about this, but I realized what Michelle realized, you know, and by the way, guys, I'm I'm very productive. I'm, I'm, you know, I, my business makes a lot of money and, and so I don't need more money. I do it because I want to, I don't want to, I don't want my business to like plateau. I want it to keep growing. But, um, I, I realized there's some things I could do to grow my business and I'm standing in my own way. There's a difference between standing in your own way and, you not wanting certain things for your business. I know there's certain things I could do in my business that would make me tons of money, but I choose not to do because I don't want that. That's different than standing in your own way. But there's all things that stand in my own way. Um, and, you know, I had to just work through those mental blocks. You know, that's not easy. 
I'll tell you that it's not easy, but I'm hoping that this Facebook live could help you a little bit. Okay. Because, um, I find, like I said, in the beginning of this Facebook live, I find a lot of the solutions that we, a lot of the issues that we have, the solutions are fairly easy, but it's the human, you guys who prevent it from happening because your lack of discipline, your lack of belief in yourself, your lack of just listening and saying, Hey, you're supposed to do this and that. So why aren't you doing it? You guys, you have no idea the amount of people, maybe not that much, but still the amount of people I've seen that I have, and you guys know who you are, who work, who have done a shop critique, for example, who know exactly what to do to get, become successful. And then later on, turn around and say, Oh, how do I do this? You know, how do I, you know, how come I'm not making any sales? I'm like, you didn't work on anything I told you to, you know? And it's like, is it because you wanted a fast solution, a quick way out, a, you know, a get rich quick type of solution? No. And listen, some people implement some of my techniques and my webinars or whatever and get some immediate result. It just depends on many different factors. You can't rely on that. It may happen to you, may not. You can't rely on that. So don't be scared of hard work. Okay. You just have to remember sometimes it's hard because you have to be motivated to say, okay, this hard work, you have to believe that this hard work that either Daya has told you or you have set up for yourself is actually going to lead to sales in the future. It's hard to see that when it's not immediate. And we know it because when people get immediate sales, all of a sudden they feel motivated. You guys know how it is. When you have a good day in sales, you feel like, pop, 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 you know, you're, you're working like crazy, you know? But when you don't, you feel like you must be doing something wrong. That, that way of thinking really cripples a lot of people. And I, for me, honestly, 100% honest right now, I don't care if I have a slow day or not slow day. I'm working the exact same way. In fact, I told you guys before that I put um, all of my sale notifications, they're on um, silent. I don't, I don't even see them. In fact, uh, no, no, I see them. The notification goes up there, but there's no noise. Um, I do this because I, well, a few reasons, but I don't want to be obsessed with sales. I, I care about sales. It's really important, but I don't want it to affect my mood. And I'm really good at not having it not affect my mood. <sighs> Sorry. What was that yawn about? Sorry. But for maybe my husband, if he's not so good at that, it affects his mood. And I tell him, I don't care. I'm working as hard as I would if I had a lot of sales and if I didn't have a lot of sales. And I know the stuff I'm working on is rock star stuff. So, so what? It might be a few slow days. It happens. It happens, guys. Don't think the whole world is crumbling because, you know, don't think Etsy's against you or shit's happening because a few slow days. There's going to be ebbs and flows, sometimes odd ones, okay? Um, and yes, there could be an ultimate reason why it's happening, but sometimes a few days is not a good indicator of something's, you know, something's bad happening, Okay. So anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this Facebook live up. I hope you enjoyed it. I am, I have to get to work. Um, that's it. I have to simply get to work. So what am I working on today? Like I said, my to-do list is out there, but more than likely I'm going to begin, um, not begin, pretty much finish up my holiday plans for my e-commerce business. Um, I don't know how long that's going to take me to be honest. Um, but hopefully I know it's gonna be done by the end of the week. So what's today's date? Okay. So <clears throat> I suspect it'll be done <clears throat> in a, in a few days. And then I have other plans I have to work on before holiday hits. Oh, so much work to do. Anyway, guys, <clears throat> enjoy your day. Um, have a happy Halloween and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye.